This video is a follow-up to my video on the two generals problem from last week. The hypothetical from that video describes entire messages being lost in one fell swoop. However, this event is far less likely than something called bit flips. This is when a single binary value called a bit is altered without losing the rest of the message or its length. This is harder to spot than a lost packet, as the data is wrong rather than missing. The solution, like for packet loss, is through redundancy. A simple approach is to add something called a parity bit periodically into the data. This bit is set to 1 if there's an odd number of 1s, and 0 if there's an even number of 1s. Essentially, it guarantees that each section has an even number of 1s. For the sender, the extra bit is unnecessary, as the parity of the data is obvious. However, adding that bit means that the total message or code should have an even parity. If the recipient sees an odd parity, that must mean that a bit got flipped, and they can ask for the message to be resent. How frequently parity bits are inserted determines the message length. Longer messages means less of the data that you send is redundant, but also means that a bit flip corrupts more data. At the smallest extreme, one parity bit for every data bit, you'd be doing the exact same thing as sending the message twice. Even at that smallest extreme though, parity bits only allow for error detection. You don't know if the value should be 1 or 0, only that you can't be certain of either option. However, adding another parity bit allows the recipient to correct a bit flip as well. If a bit flip occurs, it'll be outnumbered by unmodified bits and can be changed back by the recipient. This approach, called repetition code, is an inefficient form of error correcting code, as it triples the size of the original message. With some smart decisions for how parity bits work though, you can bring the ratio down greatly. This diagram illustrates a 7 bit long Hamming code, which pairs 4 data bits with 3 parity bits. Each parity bit guarantees that each circle on the diagram has an even number of ones. If any of the data bits flip, then at least two of the circles would have an odd parity. Which parity bits are wrong allows you to determine which bit got flipped. For instance, if data bit 2 was flipped, then the parity for 1 and 3 would be wrong, which only happens if data bit 2 is flipped. If only one circle has an odd parity, then it must be that the parity bit itself got flipped. While I've kept things abstract, Hamming himself had a much more practical purpose for the concept. He was frustrated by the constant mistakes introduced by the punch card system from the computers of the 50s. If the punch didn't quite cut all the way, it caused what is called a hanging chat, and would result in a flipped bit. This flipped bit means that the end result would be garbage, requiring a reprint. This approach was superior to a simple parity bit, as it meant that the computer did not need to be stopped when an error occurred, and could deduce what data was correct. Even though Hamming's concept was made to solve a physical problem, it acted as the genesis point for error correction theory. Later systems, like Reed Solomon Error Correction, became standard on CDs to deal with scratches, and was used on the Voyager space probes to minimize the effects of noise in its photo transmissions. Though the devices we use now will eventually become obsolete like the punch card, the math we use to engage with them is eternal, and will find uses in ways that we can't yet fathom.